Imagine if you lived in a world where 90% of the population had superpowers. That is the premise of the 2016 hit anime from the legendary studio Bones called Boko no Hero Academia, otherwise known in the West as My Hero Academia. Now these superpowers, otherwise called quirks, possessed by almost everybody, to lesser or greater degrees. Some people use these special powers in their everyday work. Some people use their powers to commit crimes. And in order to deal with those who use their quirks to commit crimes, the world depends upon superheroes, or what they just call heroes. Now, it would, it would be complete and total chaos if everybody started throwing on capes and masks and started fighting villains all over the place. Since everybody in the world has superpowers to lesser or greater degrees, in order to fight villains with superpowers, you've got to be licensed or else you're not doing it legally, which that's basically the situation in this world. And so, in order to become a licensed hero, you must go to school. Which, of course, this anime does use the whole going to a special high school for people with special powers trope, which is overused by so many other anime out there. Now, My Hero Academia is a shonen anime. Shonen means boy in Japanese, so it means it's a most shonen are shows made for kids, but older people can watch them too. The most notable examples of shonen anime that you would be familiar with would be the Mammoth series, One Piece, Fairy Tail, you should all know what Dragon Ball Z is. Shonen anime are usually known for their fillers, and there's a joke that goes around that most shonen anime are like 70% fillers and 30% story. It's a bit of an exaggeration, but they're known for having long, drawn-out stories interspaced between lots of fluff that doesn't have anything to do with the main story at all. Naruto was really bad for this, and Dragon Ball Z to somewhat lesser extent. Although, Dragon Ball Z had another problem with shonen anime, and that was dragging things out for a long time. Like, taking multiple episodes to finish a single fight. The fact that My Hero Academia actually throws out most of these tropes that shonen anime are usually criticized for is a massive breath of fresh air. Another annoying trope about a lot of shonen anime is that their main characters are loud and boisterous and really annoying. Another really annoying trope of shonen anime is that the main character is this loud, annoying, boisterous brat. But Iku is not that. He's actually a very likable guy. Now, he has no quirk whatsoever, no superpowers. So, despite this, he throws himself into the face of danger to save someone. And this shames this particular world's Superman otherwise known as All Might. Now, All Might is this world's Superman, and he's worshipped by everybody. And so he decides that uh, Izuku is worthy of inheriting his power, one for all. Now, he doesn't get this power handed to him on a silver platter like other shonen anime do. He's got to work for it. First, he's got to bulk up his body. He's got to get, he's got to strengthen himself up, and he takes a long time to do this. And then he inherits it, and then even after that, Using it for the first time, he seriously wounds himself because the power is so strong and his body is still so weak that he can't use that power totally, completely, without seriously hurting himself. And that's something that makes this anime way different from a lot of other shonen anime. So Izuku gets All Might's powers, or inherits his powers from him, and then he starts attending the trope-tastic high school for superpowers. So he goes to UA Academy, the trope-tastic high school for superpowers, and he goes to it with his childhood friend Katsuki, who is going to a school for heroes, 
but he acts like he's trying to earn Villain of the Year. Like seriously, this guy's got three moves. Angry, Pissed, and Hulk Smash. The rest of the cast is rounded out by El Chaco, who has the ability to control gravity and is everyone's waifu. Suyu, whose quirk is the ability to do everything frogs can do and is everyone's other waifu. Then there's Sasuke, I mean Shoto, who has the power of fire and ice, but he doesn't use his fire power because his father's an asshole. Then you have Tenya, who has motors in his legs and seriously needs to get laid so it will calm him the fuck down. And there's a plethora of other characters that sort of round everything out. The original manga that the anime is based on was inspired by actual western comic books of superheroes, like DC and Marvel. My Hero Academia's take on these superheroes is, well, Japanese. And of course, you're going to have wacky characters, wacky names, and wacky superpowers. It's very much Japanese. And there have been a few other anime that actually touched on the idea of superheroes, not the Jap not the specifically Japanese style superheroes like the Super Sentai heroes or magical girls like with Sailor Moon or the Super Sentai characters that are best known in the West as Power Rangers. But they touch on a more Western style superhero, and that's what you see in a lot of other anime like Samurai Flamenco, or One Punch Man, or Tiger and Bunny, and it takes that sort of approach. And its approach to shonen is so different from other shows in its genre, where there's little to no filler, the story is concise, the main character does not get power without consequences. I mean, he has to grow into his powers, he has to learn to control them properly, or he will break himself seriously, he doesn't get any massive power buildup without losing something or without, without having to actually work for it. He earns everything he gets, and that is so refreshing for a shonen anime. The animation is done by Studio Bones a legend in the anime industry. They are the ones behind some of the most iconic anime ever made. Names you might be familiar with, Full Metal Alchemist, and another great shonen anime that has, that's devoid of some of the other shonen-esque things, and that's Soul Eater. There are only two seasons of the series out right now, and everybody's waiting for the third one in 2018. Funimation, you are going to license Season 3, right? Speaking of which, the series is dubbed by Funimation. You can watch it on their site, or you can watch the subbed on Crunchyroll. I am not going to get into the whole dubbed versus sub argument. It's silly. Now, the original Japanese version is good, but Funimation is known for making really good dubs. And it's been a long time since we've had an awful dub. If you're new to anime, this is a good series to start out with. It's not too heavy, and it's a shorter series. Don't let the fact that this is a shonen, and typically a shonen is made for kids in Japan, don't let that put you off, because a lot of these shows are typically much more mature than your average Western cartoon. To give you an idea of what I mean, Look at a show like Animaniacs. It was a show for kids, but it had a ton of adult jokes interspliced into it. Way, way more than you might have guessed. If you're feeling a little adventurous and you want to try something that's similar, try Full Metal Alchemist. And there's two different versions. There's the original, and then there's Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood. And these shows are legendary. They are loved by fans for a reason. And then there's the anime Soul Eater. It's a shonen too, but it throws out some of the shonen tropes. And it also shows off a lot of Studio Bones' pretty high production quality. You don't have to be a kid to enjoy anime. In fact, the majority of anime out there is not intended for kids at all. Even shonen anime are 
way more mature than your typical Western cartoon that you might see on Disney or, or Cartoon Network. If you still think anime is for kids, I dare you to watch Higurashi no Nako Korone or When They Cry. Just don't let your kids watch it. They're scarred for life. I think it's silly that you have to like stop liking things just because you get old. And you can still like watching shows, certain shows and whatever you want. And when it comes to anime, the whole premise of this new show here on Zork Central is to basically say, even though you're an adult, you can still watch anime. And, and most anime is for adults. So don't be afraid to watch these shows. Don't be afraid to watch anime. Don't be afraid to let anime fans, younger anime fans, know that you watch it. I mean, in the comments, I'm probably going to be called a creepo for liking anime girls. So you guys can bite me. So I'll see you guys in December for another great anime recommendation. I guarantee you it's going to be a good one. Thanks for watching. Are you sick of all the drama in gaming social media? Then come on over to the official Gamers Day community in Google Plus. We're a fun, safe, and drama-free community. Links are found in the video description. If you like this video, please like, favorite, and subscribe. Also, here's a couple other videos you might find interesting.